M for mature. Hey everybody and welcome to Agents of Mayhem. And this is my first impressions video of the game. And uh, this this actual this actually this video has gone through a ton of different iterations. Uh, I am your host, Hades Timer, and we are going to be talking about and looking at Agents of Mayhem um, in a very a compact, uh, All quick form. And that's part of the reason why I'm showing the beginning of the game and not any other part of it. Um, mostly because Agents of Mayhem is a little bit complicated in the sense that um, of all the systems that go on in the game. Uh, first, they're showing you the special ability. Every agent has a special ability. And uh, this is Hollywood. Hollywood is kind of like... The, the best analog that I know of, that I've heard, is that um, he's like Johnny Cage. He's very much like that. Um, and this is his mayhem ability. Basically just a bunch of explosions go off and kill the guys, that's basically the whole thing. He also gets a little fortified while this is going on. The fortifying, uh, as you can see, is the, are those blue lines over him. That just means he has more shield than he would normally. It's got, he's got like an overshield. Uh, it doesn't last very long, and uh, it's pretty useful, uh, especially later on when you can like level it up and make it better. Holy shit. I think I found um, Babs chemistry set. Hold on. I'll shut it down real quick. So, those are the two um, big things uh -oh. in the game. What the each fall? agent has what? his own ability fall, and his own uh, mayhem ability. Uh, the mayhem ability is kind of like That's a build a up. It's a super. So, it's something you build up That's over a, a period of time. The um The regular ability is yes. just on a cooldown. Uh, so the way that works is that uh, after you use it, uh, usually about 14 seconds later or something like that, uh, you can use it again. Uh, that's pretty much all it is. Um, none of the abilities or agent uh, supers are like really crazy or nuts. Uh, most of them are pretty... They're, you know, they do a good amount of damage, they kill a bunch of guys, but... They're not like crazy over the top like, oh my god, this is so, you know, different and unique and amazing. <laughs> you know, it's nothing like that. Uh, some are definitely better than others and some work uh, within the confines of the game a lot better than other ones do. But I will say that most of the agents I've played with already, which I've played with about seven agents All so right. far, um have pretty satisfying uh, supers and have pretty decent agent abilities. I love kicking Legion ass. You all as psyched as I am. Um, waiting, tech? However, tech out these turrets. No problem. you know, <laughs> System failure. they definitely could have done more with it. You know, I, I'm going to say that. Um, I and I'm not saying that I completely dislike it. Uh, because it is cool, and it's totally different than anything that we've seen, like, in Saints Row or um, any of those types of games. But by the same token, uh, they could have definitely done way more with it. Uh, and they didn't. Uh, normally in the game, uh, you are able to pick freely between three different agents that you take with you on a mission. Uh, as this is the first mission, you can't do that. You are... Uh, these agent uh, changes are scripted and you all have to meet at the same place. And that's basically what they're doing here. You'll see this dude run into Hollywood here in a minute. Uh, because that's where they're, you know, they're supposed to meet up. Um, so, yeah, you know, this teleport this teleharpoon thing is kind of dumb. I, you can only do it to like one person at a time. And I feel like it's kind of useless. Um, 
it's like great now you're here <laughs> you know um this guy's really good for with, with melee he has a really really powerful melee attack so uh it's pretty much one of the better things he can do his mayhem ability is these uh mines that he can uh detonate he puts he shoots out all these mines and then he can detonate them. You'll see in a second. So with as with many agent abilities and supers, uh, you usually the way you use them is you uh, fire them off. So no matter what, generally speaking, um, with the exception of Fortune, who who her super doesn't work that way, but. Uh, all the other one, pretty much every other agent I've run into, um, either it's an area of an effect around you, like Hollywood's. See, he is just about up with Hollywood. Or it's something you shoot. Damn! Nice job on those turrets, Jack. Hey, yeah. So, we got a situation in the Southwest Cargo Bay. Damn it! This is only my first day. There you are, my pretties. Just need to take out a couple pentejos first. Fortune is pretty much the most useful character, the most useful agent in the game, uh, at least so far. I'm about seven or eight hours in, and she is so far the most useful agent in the game. Um. So that's her special ability. It's it's like like a cannonball she, it's a it's like a ball of energy that gets thrown out and it shoot and it hits a whole bunch of enemies uh, and it does a lot of damage it's pretty cool uh, her guns do damage over time so she's kind of like tracer except the way that she shoots but the difference is is that her guns have a cooldown on them as opposed to reloading so um, she can keep shooting guys yeah, this is her bot. Now her bot can stun guys, and you can upgrade the bot to do all kinds of stuff. Uh, the big problem with um, Fortune that I found, the really only issue I've had with her, is that to get her um, mayhem ability charged seems to take forever. I don't know what it is, but it just takes forever to charge it. And the only way I've been able to get it to work is if I hit a floor to lee Then it works. This is hacking. It's it's real easy. Um, it's like at some point I think they make you do like uh, maybe three or four little circles on there that you have to hit that hit X on. Uh, I think that's the extent of the hacking I've seen so far. It's pretty freaking easy. So, um... The game starts out on the recommended difficulty, which is... 2. And, um... I've played it all the way up to difficulty level 5. Franchise Force is back in action! Franchise what now? Franchise Force. I gave us a nickname. You can't give yourself a nickname. At that point, I feel like me. it gets a little us. bit um, punishing unless you are using the right characters for the right situation and you are um, completely leveled. You know, you have a good level uh, for all your characters because the uh, agents do level up independent of each other. If you are with each other, you know, if, if the agents are part of your team, uh, they will level along with, uh, along with the person, you know, along with the agent you're using. However, if your agents are not with you, then they do not level. And all agents start at level one when you get them, when you unlock them. So... Let's, you know, for simplicity's sake, um, Fortune and Hollywood and this, the, the third guy there, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, um, are going to be your highest level agents 
um, unless you stop using them. Uh, and it's you know, it, and you can use them all throughout the whole game. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to unlock other agents. You don't have to. You have to unlock. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to unlock other agents. It's totally, you know, um, optional. So you could take these three agents throughout the whole game if you wanted to, and uh, just play them. Uh, you wouldn't have to play anybody else. Mayhem! I should have known. <laughs> you fools. Okay, and there's one final thing I'm going to explain uh, while we're having this boss fight. Um, Do you have any clue as to how much danger? You also have gadgets with our like, which are like Why perks that are added to each one of your agents, and you can uh, you can buy them, you can find them, you can uh, earn them. There's all kinds of ways of getting them, and uh, as you get them, you can apply them, and it changes the way that your character, your agents work. Um, it'll change. There's three aspects of the agent that it can change. It'll be a passive, a weapon, or um, an active. Now, either one of these three can be changed with these uh, particular perks that you get. Uh, they're different for each agent. They're not, you know, you can't, they're not interchangeable or anything like that. Uh, so you have, to, so you just, you know, you can only equip the ones that you have, and you can only equip them on the agents that you have them on. Um, and you'll see them, um, I think, in this First Impressions video. Um, originally, this video was a lot longer, uh, and that's why I said that it's gone through a bunch of iterations. But I decided that a shorter uh, first impressions video would be better than having a really, really long one and trying to uh, do commentary and everything else on such a long video. Um, it was going to be the original video was two hours. I wanted to show the beginning missions of the game. You know, like uh, I when I played this game, uh, when I played the game for the videos, I just went through. And played all the first missions, uh, as far as all the main missions, you know, the story missions, uh, and ignored everything else. Um, I unlocked one agent, uh, Rama, which I believe is mandatory. I think you have to unlock her, and that's it. That's she's the only agent you have to unlock uh, in the story progress. Once again, mayhem. You show no thought. No consideration. You are only brutes with bullets. Isn't that right? What is it they say? When all you have is a hammer. Every problem looks like a nail. Farewell, mayhem. And to you, my sweet pet. Have fun in your new home. Uh, we gotta get out of here. So anyway, um, other than the uh, other than the perks that you get, which are called gadgets, uh, you also get to level up your character uh, with uh, skill points, and these are just you get these points just as you're leveling up. You get one point every time you level. Um, and those can those are completely different for every uh, character in for every agent in the game they're completely different uh, they're they there's no um, <clears throat> there's no kind of uh, continuity among them uh, of all the agents I've played I haven't had really any uh, commonality you know they all do something different um, and then finally, there's something called core upgrades. Be back in a minute. Hey 
boss? Why? Okay, there's something called core upgrades, and what that is, is you get these crystals. And you slot these crystals into one of three slots, or all three slots if you have enough crystals. And for each one of these crystals that you slot, it changes it changes some char aspect of your character in a major way. Now you're seeing the gadgets, you're kind of seeing what the gadgets do. These are all different, these are all different. Uh, gadgets for different areas of the character so just because a character gets three gadgets doesn't necessarily mean that they can use all three of those at once I don't know. it's just I think he sees me more like a sister than a woman you know what's your opinion on intra-agency romance Friday me why what did you hear oh thank goodness hold on what's this oh dear what's up to know I'm picking up a massive dark matter energy signature. Uh, Friday, you there? Yes, hello? Agent, what's going on? Yeah, so I don't think getting Babylon is going to be as easy as we thought. The way that you get gadgets seem to be relatively random. Uh, I've definitely had a situation where I got a, got, um, three different gadgets... Uh, for the same character, for the same, I mean, two different gadgets for the same character for the same slot. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. I do not care about the dynamo or soul. I care about Dr. Babylon being dead. Persephone, babe, don't worry. Friday and I will have this wrapped up in no time. You better, Agent. You better. So... That's pretty much the progression system of the game. Uh, you also have stuff like agency level and stuff like that. Um, so uh, that kind of thing is, everybody here on is a little more complicated, and it's not Wait, something I'm going to get into now because it's not really necessary for a per first impressions world, thing. Uh, just Anyone so you know, I mean, you do have the ability to upgrade your agency and... Them. Upgrading your agency has benefits, um, I'm in the area. very different benefits, you know, they're, they're a bunch of different ones. So, um, I've played probably uh, somewhere around, oh geez, probably seven hours of Agents of Mayhem at this point. Uh, I've been mostly doing side stuff uh, since I got about halfway through what I think is halfway yeah, through the main quest. Um, I might be wrong about how, f how far I am as far as the main quest is concerned. Um, but I did do, like, one mission right after another. And, from what I can tell, did, did it just move again? This thing as far as, like, what, uh, people have said is how long, you know, the game is and everything else, that's what makes me believe that I'm about halfway through. So, anyway, um... You can also get into vehicles. You have to uh, push the triangle button. You're going to run up on them and push the triangle button. Or if you're on the Xbox, push the Y button. Uh, but I, you know, it, it's... Driving in this game is really bad. Uh, it has a really... It's very wonky. And uh, you'll get, like, agency vehicles and everything at some point, And... Um, the agency vehicles work a little bit better, 
but most of the civilian the civilian vehicles uh, you're in Seoul by the way just so you know I don't know if that's a if that's something everybody knows but the gameplay takes place in future Seoul um, anyway uh, the civilian vehicles uh, are really really slow and they handle really really badly um, so it's sort of you don't really have uh, yeah, once you get access to the agency vehicles there's absolutely no reason to get in a civilian vehicle unless it's for a quest As expected, I'm staring at a golem right now. You know, I'm hesitant to call this a golem, but... Never mind. You take care of that, and I'm going to see if I can find out what Babylon is up to. Babylon's toy? Good. Now get back to the Ark so we can plan our next move. Sorry, that was just a little loud, so I decided I'd just let it go rather than trying to compete with it. Uh, anyway, but, um, so you really don't have any reason to uh, get into a civilian vehicle uh, unless it's for a quest once you earn the um, ability to unlock the agency vehicles. Uh, you get the agency vehicle pretty early. Um, but you are going to be maybe if you don't like the traversal, which I think the traversal is fine. I, I it's not as quite as good as in Saints Row, but I think it's pretty close. Um, so if you don't like the traversal, it might be a little. It might take a little too long for your taste before you actually get a vehicle. It's one of the upgrade cores I was telling you about. Anyway, uh, so. More story. The zero point dynamo was too unstable for my work. Where is my crystal? The process cannot be rushed. Your time is nearly up. Do not squander this final opportunity. Yes, Morning Star. I have a plan. Behold, the Sermac Comet. The crystal encased in its shell has a dark matter resonance more than sufficient for the Morning Star's plans. And I have precisely the tool for the job. The Hammersmith Graviton Induction Resonator. Do not fail me, Hammersmith. I must have that comet. So, uh, once the game is gotten through, like, the first... I would say first two hours let's say well, there's not as many cutscenes there's not this much story uh, there's a lot agent. more just um, going from place to place and doing stuff uh, if you stay in the main quest you will see um, you know all pretty much the cutscenes that the game has to offer um, and then of course there's the whole thing of like the agent missions and each one of those agent missions uh, before when you actually be start to be able to play as the new agent 
uh, there will be a, a cutscene uh, showing off that agent, uh, like giving you some backstory about who they are and you know what their deal is and all that stuff. And those are really cool. I like those. Um, they're very well done. I think the agent missions as a whole are probably some of the best parts of this game. Um, the other thing that I really like are the um, story missions. The main story missions are very good. Uh, I think that they are they're pretty they're different. Um, <clears throat> they're pretty different from each other in the sense of how they're set up and the boss battles. In each one of them are pretty good. Um, they might be a little frustrating on higher difficulties. I definitely would consider kind of lowballing your difficulty, especially if you're not using um, your original agents. If you're using your original agents and they're like level eight or nine, um, you know you can get through a lot of the story mission missions without too much trouble. But if you're starting new agents, um, kind of regardless of who they are. Um, you might want to, you know, kind of lowball your story missions, uh, unless you want to go around and do side stuff, uh, to level them up. Um, other than that, uh, there isn't too much to talk about with Agents of Mayhem as far as the systems and what it's like and everything else. Um, I will say that I really enjoyed my time playing it and I still, I kind of been trying to find excuses to play it uh just sort of oh you know i'll just play for an hour or i'll just play for a few minutes or i'll play while i'm doing this other thing or i'll play while i'm waiting for this other thing to happen um and to me that's not that's a sign of a really good game that i'm you know really excited about playing it and i really want to play more of it and da 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 um is it the best game in the whole world definitely not um are there a lot of things about it that are kind of not that great and should be better definitely is it buggy oh yes it is very buggy um i had a whole uh sequence that um the game would not load in the enemies that it needed to load in in order for me to continue playing the game um and i had to restart the game uh i had to get i i thought all i'd have to do is restart the mission but as it turned out i had to restart the entire game in order for it to uh, work so and I also changed the difficulty I'm a, I have a feeling that changing the difficulty was what fixed it uh, and not necessarily um, restarting the mission I don't know um, if I were you I would not start the uh, Rama side mission the I mean the Rama agent mission at uh, difficulty uh, at the at five difficulty um any of the other difficulties go ahead <laughs> but uh the difficulty five on the uh on the on the rama unlock mission uh i don't think it works <laughs> anyway um so that's pretty much my long and my short of it i don't uh, like i said i haven't finished the game i have played quite a bit of it but i haven't finished it um, and I have not touched hardtack since practically the beginning of the game, uh, at all. I haven't played him hardly at all. Uh, as soon as I got other, you know, as soon as I got other people, uh, I stopped, um, I stopped using him. Um, he's a good tank character, but, uh, there are other characters in the game that I prefer. So, uh, you can kind of just play with whoever you'd like, um... Unless you're playing on a high difficulty, and then there are kind of prescribed characters uh, that work the best, and you kind of need to do that because um, you can get one-shotted. Uh, your the shield, your shields, and your health. It, it's kind of weird. Um, your shields recharge, obviously. Your health doesn't. And what you can do with your health is you can get health back by killing guys. Uh, but it's not necessarily, uh, you know, definite that they're going to drop health. Um, so if you're in a boss fight, for instance, uh, there would be no reason for the boss to drop health. So uh, what ends up happening is uh, you um, you can die pretty freaking easy um, in a boss fight, especially 
some of the later boss fights. Uh, they're really, really difficult. This is the t and I don't mean like they're Dark Souls difficult. I mean that they just spam you with so much stuff. So much, um, you know, like so much damage that if you don't get out of the damage or you don't know what direction the damage is coming from, uh, you can just get annihilated. And, uh, you know, sometimes the different, you know, all the bosses have different phases and everything else. So it's possible that it's just a matter, it, you know, it would just be a matter of, okay, well, I didn't know they were going to do that. Um, and you can just get annihilated. Um, so, uh, you know, I played the majority of the game on uh, difficulty 5. Uh, and then when I stopped doing the story missions, I dropped it down to difficulty 3. And uh, they recommend you playing on difficulty 2. Um, so, I mean, if any of that stuff can, you know, gives you any kind of an idea of what it's like, you know, go for it. You know, I, I would definitely, I, I, I think difficulty 2 is a little easy. Um, you know, you can one-shot just about everything. Um... But, you know, it's up to you. The perfect spot, Agent. Soul's Tranquility Temple. Head there and set the beacon for a warp point, yeah? And uh, missions are replayable. Uh, you can change the difficulty and play the mission again. Uh, you know, and uh, so you can get... The, the reason you would change difficulties and the reason why you would want to do it on a high difficulty is because you get more rewards so, for doing it on a higher difficulty than you do on a lower a one. Now, what do they mean by that? Well, you get more money, basically. You get more resources. Um, it's not like you get... It's not like it's some kind of... Uh, you know, it's, it's not It's not like in uh, Diablo or something where you... If you uh, play on the higher difficulties, you know, it drops legendary weapons or something. It's not to that extent. <laughs> um, it's just uh, more resources to do some crafting later on in the game and uh, more money which you will need later on in the game uh, the, the the game is the agency level and your agency perks and stuff like that are very much tied to um, you having money so you want to make as much money as you possibly can but, you know, it, it's up to you as far as how you want to play the game and uh, what kinds of stuff you want to do. Um, so, uh, we're going to go back to the Ark, I guess. Yeah, here we go. Um, Learn to swim. Got these more you know things on the, on, the, on the loading screens, which is pretty cool. I think they're funny. Um well, well. Welcome back to the arc. Have fun in A lot of people have really uh been hating on this game. They really don't like it. Um in the meantime, or they think it's just very very average. Um I'm going to say I can understand why they think that it's very very average. Um I'm not entirely sure why they uh, dislike it to the degree that they dislike it. I think that they were expecting something else. Um, I think they were expecting Saints Row. Um, and, I mean, it's been a really long time since we've gotten a Saints Row, and uh, there's even been some uh, talk that the people who made Saints Row, like the writers and stuff, who made Saints Row are probably not even with the company anymore. So, I think it's a little bit unrealistic to think that Volition is going to come out with another game like Saints Row. Um, I think it's a little bit unrealistic to th hold a new game up to like the writing standards of Saints Row or what we got in Saints Row as opposed to what we have here. Um... I enjoy the game on its, you know, uh, because of what it is. There are a lot of things wrong with it. I will agree with that. But I can pretty much overlook the things that are wrong with it, at least at this point. And I think I've played it, the game enough 
to, you know, know whether or not these things would get annoying to me. Uh, even when I had that big problem with the enemies not spawning in and uh, the game not working, you know, for lack of a better word, um, I still put up with it. I still had patience with it, which I was a little bit surprised at in, in hindsight. So I must have really, you know, I must enjoy the game enough that those I can overlook those kinds of things. Because otherwise, I still wouldn't be playing it. I would have stopped playing it when that happened. Uh, I wouldn't have continued to play it for another f three, four hours. So, um, I really do enjoy the game. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of people have a problem with this whole R the Gremlin Tech stuff being one u uh, single use. Uh, I haven't had any problem with it. It's... Either you use it or you don't. I mean, uh, I don't find it very useful. There's a there's a full team res that you can uh, that you can make. Uh, it uh, that unlocks uh, automatically for you. Um, once you get that, you make a bunch of those, and the game is a little easier because you can um, because you can res your team then, uh, which is really useful. Um, and that's all I've used it for, uh, except for this glitter ball gun, which I've tried a few times, and it doesn't work worth. It, it doesn't work well, uh, especially not against a boss. So uh, don't use the glitter glitter ball gun against any of the bosses because they won't work. Um, other than that, uh, I don't know what else to say. Uh, like I said, I do. I did really enjoy the game. Uh, I know a lot of people. Um, you know, haven't enjoyed it or have found it very lacking. And uh, as I said, I kind of understand that. But by the same token, um, I think they're being a little harsh on it. Um, and for my money, uh, I've enjoyed playing it. And I will probably continue to play it until I actually get the other games that are coming out next week. Uh, which Uncharted, Lost Legacy, and then I'm also getting uh, F1 2017. So unless I, until I actually am able to play one of those two games, um, I will probably be playing this. So um, you can take that for what it's worth. Um, and, uh, you know, it's probably a game that I would continue to play uh, until I'm actually done with it. I uh, finish all the story missions and maybe, you know, it'll unlock all the agents um, at the very least. So I'll probably be doing that. Um, I'll probably be doing that at the very least. Um, is it going to be like in the running for my game of the year or something like that? No, it's not. But. It's definitely a very fun game, and it's one of the games that uh, one of the games that I've played in the last three months or so that has really grabbed my attention, and I can't you know I can't stop playing it. So uh, you know, take that for that for what it's worth. If you are a PS Plus subscriber, you can pick up these. Um, these gun skins and agent skins. Um, they're not for all the agents. But uh, I think your main... I think that it's mainly for a Fortune, uh, Hard Tack, and Hollywood here. I think. Um, makes Fortune look like a pirate. Make har makes Hard Tack look like a captain. Um... And uh, it makes um, Hollywood look like that. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's, uh, <clears throat> it's uh, I don't know. Miami Vice. I don't know. So you can do that if you want. They're okay. Um, I think the pre-order skins were better. Uh, pre-order skins were... Uh, legal action pending and I think they were better they make uh, I think they make fortune look like Harley Quinn 
Uh, I don't remember what the other ones were. Off the top of my head. Don't remember. Uh, anyway, so that's going to just about do it for me. And uh, I will... Uh, I, if you guys liked this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. If, um, if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And uh, if you guys have played uh, Agents of Mayhem, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think of it. And uh, I will talk to you awesome people later. Bye.